So the election, we've just gone through it, and um, I think anybody who's experienced it probably isn't feeling like we're a unified country at this point. There was a study published uh, in 2014 by the Pew Research Center, and it's called Political Polarization in the American Public. This is the cover of the study. Uh, and they said in that study, two years ago, that the country was the most divided it had ever been. Uh, at least the most divided in the last couple decades. What do you think's happened in the last two years? Have we gotten more together or more divided? I think we'd say we've gotten more divided. Here's some information uh, from that study. They said that 27% um, of Democrats see the Republican Party as a threat to the nation's well-being. And 36% of Republicans see the Democratic Party as a threat to the nation's well-being. Whatever side you're on, a heck of a lot of people think the other side is a threat to the nation's well-being. And it's not just the United States. The recent Brexit experience in the UK pointed out the polarization in the United Kingdom and other countries like France are confronting the same kind of polarization, political polarization. And that polarization is reflected in what Desmond Tutu calls a radical brokenness in all of existence, which I think what that means is we are meant to connect and we struggle to connect. The AARP had a study not too long ago that said one out of three people over 45 considers themselves currently alone. And 43% uh, of people, 45 to 50, identify themselves as not clinically but chronically alone. Almost half the people, 45 to 50, consider themselves to be alone. So, given the uh, results, given the fact that you might feel, what the heck am I supposed to do now? I want to do a series of videos where I give you simple suggestions on ideas to try out. They might not work, they might work, but at least, in my uh, opinion, there is great hope. The reality is, the conversations you can change to move things forward are the ones that you experience. We can't take on everything around us, we can't deal with everything, but if all of our little conversations, the small conversations that we have, the people we meet, if those conversations change, then change will happen on a much bigger scale. So uh, at TLC, our conference last week, I introduced this concept of it starts with us, hashtag it starts with us, the idea being that we, each of us, can do something to move things forward. And over the next 10 weeks, I'm going to share with you suggestions, many of them from the book Better Conversations, but suggestions on how to move forward. Um, I'll share some tools or books or resources that we could look at. My one for today is the idea of seeking out common ground, finding common ground. At a time like this, when we think that person whose bumper sticker is different than our bumper sticker is a threat to the nation's well-being, it's hard for us to talk. It's hard for us to share ideas and learn and ask what's the source for your ideas and, and to have dialogue. But without dialogue, we're in big trouble. And so I think the way to move forward is to look for, first off, what do we hold in common? In um, Better Conversations, I have a simple little uh, acronym to identify things you can do to look for things you hold in common. And here, here are the things. Uh, first off, we could talk about the things, the interests that we share. Uh, maybe I'm interested in uh, Americana music, or maybe I'm interested in running. It doesn't look like it, but I might be. Uh, maybe I'm interested in a particular set of fiction, or art, or food, or cooking, or any number of different things. If I can find some kind of shared interest, that establishes some common ground. The second thing is convictions, our beliefs. If we can establish something we both believe in, it can establish common ground. For example, if you're an educator, and I'm an educator, there's a very good chance that we both believe that we want the best things for our kids. And we believe that education is an extremely important thing. And then the next thing is activities. What do we do that we both share? Maybe we both like to cook. Maybe we both, in my case, both like to eat. Maybe we both have an interest in traveling. Maybe we uh, are really interested in going to national parks. Maybe we read certain kinds of novels. If we can establish activities we share, it's another way of finding common ground. And then what are our roles and responsibilities? If I'm traveling and I meet someone and I find out that they're an instructional coach and I'm an instructional coach, once we establish that common bond, we can move forward. And finally, uh, the last part of it is, um, what are our experiences? Where have we gone? What have we done? If we've gone to the same university, if we've uh, uh, visited the same places, uh, if we've had similar kinds of experiences that establishes ways in which we can find common ground. A good friend of mine, a um, fellow that I've run with a few times, has pretty much the opposite political views of me. 
But when we go out for our walks and runs, um, we can talk about those politics because we've established a lot of common ground ahead of time. We know we have a lot of similar interests in sports, places we've gone, different things we do. And once we've got that common ground, then it's possible to talk about what divides us. But without common ground, it's not going to be possible. If the first thing I see is what's different about you, we'll really struggle to, to build a bridge. But if the first thing I see is what is the biggest thing about us, the things we hold in common, the chance to move forward is, is, is it's at least possible. And it could be very possible that we can have a conversation. So my first idea is to find common ground. I'm going to have a link in this blog where you can download a form to help you think about things you hold in common. It's just free. You can use it. I don't think you really need the form, though. It's a mindset. It's to say, what can I hold in common? What can I find that I hold in common? Especially with people who view things differently from me. What if it's a family member? Or what if right now we're struggling to connect with someone that we love, that's in our family, that we're going to see at Thanksgiving? What can we do to move forward? Because the way forward is not about being silent. The way forward is about finding ways to speak so that we can actually have a conversation. And I think that starts with finding common ground.